that singing tonight. Amen. Yeah. Austin and Miss Tiny. If you've been here this week, Brother Greg started off with Jesus. name is Messiah, right? Then he moved to John the Baptist, which was the forerunner, right? And Mr. Buddy preached on Andrew, which was Simon Peter's brother. And Mark, last night, preached on Judas Iscariot, the betrayer. This is what scripture says. What they're called in scripture. Sometimes the names that people give to other people, maybe it's not a, a true character of what they are. You know, we could Especially as kids, you know, you already get a, a conception, you know, you're, you're thinking, you're saying, that's a bad teacher, you know, not your teacher, I'm just saying, you know, she's a mean teacher. <laughs> so the kids go in there automatically and they're saying, watch out for that lady. They already got a, something in their head, they don't even give her a chance, right? Don't even give her a chance. Because of something that somebody else pinned on that person. Right? Traditions from other men. Wherever it came down from. Right? Mm -hmm. Honest Abe. Was he really honest? I have no idea. <laughs> I don't know how honest he was. He was a sinner, I know that, just like all of us. Right? Yeah, that's right? I'm sure he probably lied at some point in time. <laughs> if I was to guess. Right? So if we think about it, do we give people a chance? Like that person who's that's the meanest person I've ever seen. No, they might have been having a bad day, right? You don't know all the circumstances that came about with that. I'm going to ask you to open your Bibles to John 20, verse 25. If you will, if there's don't have a Bible, there should be a Bible in one of these pews in front of you. If you need it, take it home with you. We'll put some more in there. Okay? But it's good to follow along in Scripture also. So now we've got two senses working. We've got our ears and our eyes. Right? Okay? Now let us penetrate the heart. John 20, verse 25 says, The other disciples there, therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. Lord, bless the reading of this word tonight. Lord, Let me say what you want me to say, Lord. What you want to say through me. Keep me out of it. Or we can give all the praise and honor to you. That's my prayer. Amen.
So if you guessed now, you had 10 guesses, basically. Right? Because there was 10 other disciples. My guy's Thomas. So I want you to clear your mind of whatever thoughts you've had about Thomas. Because I went around and I asked people, I asked a question, you know, Thomas the disciple? Yeah, the doubter, right? 90% of those people didn't know what he doubted. They just knew he doubted. So sometimes we say things about people but yet we haven't really got a full understanding of them, right? He was a doubter. That's it. That's all we know because of this passage right here, right? Tonight, I want to set some standards or a scale, maybe, if you want to, want to say it that way. We want to see why Thomas is different. You know, he was referred to in Scripture as Didymus, which means a twin. Right? Besides the doubt, Thomas might have been one that was just kind of like an OCD or, ain't that what it's called? DD8, whatever it is. You know, he had to kind of that or he kind of had to know everything and he wanted to plan everything out or whatever. Right? I don't think he was really gullible though. Right? He was searching the truth, I believe. Hopefully we'll see that. I want to set a standards and the level of doubt. And some examples of doubt. We define doubt. It says, Webster says, to call into question the truth or to be uncertain. Lack of confidence. Uncertainty of belief or opinion that often interferes with decision making. Doubt suggests both uncertainty and an inability to make a decision. An example says, plagued by doubt, says, well, what to do? Right? You know, when I look at it, sometimes I doubt certain things, and it's usually myself more than anything. Right? I bought a little car. I YouTubed it and done all that stuff and seen how to fix the thing. And I said, I ain't ever took the part of it. This is a little Toyota car, you know? I'll break down this engine and fix it, you know? Trying to see which was the best way to go. Because there was all kinds of different, you know, when you look, there's all kinds of different ways you can do something, right? So I need to go back with the same head bolts or put studs in it. I got to change this head gas because that's what's wrong with it. Put a new one in there, it's $1,800. There was no doubt in my mind that I was not paying the $1,800. <laughs> you understand that, right? That was clear. My decision was already made. I made a decision when that happened. And I said, you know what? I'll spend the three or $400 try to fix it myself. Guess what? It fired up and it ran. Yee-hee. Gave me, yeah. All of a sudden, the engine light comes on like two months later. I'm like, oh, what did I do? <laughs> Doubt pops up in my head again, you know. I'm like, whoa. Luckily, it was just O2 sensor. But that two months, I'm sitting there looking at the temperature gauge, making sure it doesn't get too hot. I don't, you know, whatever that you got to do. I'm looking at all these kind of things, right? And I'm kind of doubting myself more than anything. You know, my wife says that I'm kind of like Thomas in a way because I doubt other people. I tell her I'm just a realist. <laughs> I've been through things and I know what they're fixing to do, right? I can see it coming. That's not, is that a doubt? No, 
know that's that's a fact. <laughs> it's, it's coming. So when we look at it, we want to see some examples in Scripture about that. Hebrews 11. You had Abraham and Sarah. Did they have doubts? Hebrews 11 talks about great people of faith. The whole chapter is about great people of faith. Right? We're not taking anything away from them whatsoever, but we've got to establish what doubt is on that scale. Right? Uncertainty. Right? Not knowing the truth. Okay? Abraham and Sarah, they doubted so much, they said, we'll help you out, God. We'll do it ourselves. Right? We'll have a son ourselves. Moses, I can't speak. There's no way. You want me to lead Israel? I can't even talk. What about Gideon? Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. Gideon, let me tell you what Gideon, Judges 6 and 8 talks about Gideon. And he's going against the, the Midianites when he says, if, he says this thing, if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us and where are all his miracles? This is what he says. He says, how can I save Israel? I'm the weakest of the weakest clan. He's doubting his self for sure, right? But he doubted God also. Then he wanted to sign, of course. But the do on the fleece, don't put the do on the fleece. But the do on the fleece, I mean, he, did, he, he just wanted God to keep showing him something. Always showing something. You know, sometimes we might be like that. Maybe I won't have as much doubt if you show me what I need to do, Right? I'm not going to mess with some of these other disciples. We're going to get into, we'll go to Matthew 14, verse 25 through 31. Let's just read this real quick. Because we're trying to establish what doubt is and who had it, maybe. Right? Mm -hmm. If you're there, say amen. Mm -hmm. And in the fourth, fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. Hmm. Fear was part of that, right? But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I. Be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? He just came from the feeding of 5,000. Just seen that miracle. He was actually in the midst of a miracle at that time. Yep. Right? Yep. Uh, in the middle of it. And he could see Jesus. Right? Let's go to we're, only, we're just going to go to Matthew. Hold your place there in Matthew, but we're going to go to John 1 real quick. And then we'll be back in John. Okay. And we're going to look at John the Baptist. Okay? John the Baptist. We're going to look at John 1, verse 29 through 37. The next day, John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me cometh a man which is preferred before me, for he was before me, and I knew him not. 
but that he should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore am I come baptizing with water. And John bear record, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it abode upon him. And I knew him not, but the but he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto me, Upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, the same as he which baptized with the Holy Ghost. And I saw and bear record that this is the Son of God. Again, the next day after, John stood and two of his disciples and looked upon Jesus. As he walked, he saith, Behold, the Lamb of God. Right? He said, Behold, the Lamb of God. One more time, we're going to turn to Matthew 11. We're going to look right here at 1 through 6. Maybe a little further. And it came to pass when Jesus had made an end of commanding his twelve disciples, he departed thence to teach and to preach in their cities. Now, when John had heard in prison the works of Christ, he was in prison. John was in prison, okay? He sent two of his disciples and said to him, Art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? John just said he was, behold, he's the Lamb of God, right? Now he's got something in the way. He's in prison. There's a tragedy. There's a turmoil. There's something that's in the way and causes John to doubt this. And he's saying, was this, did I make the right choice? Was, was this the Messiah? Jesus answered and said unto them, Go and show John again those things which ye do, and hear and see. The blind receive their sight, and the lame walk, and lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear them. The dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. And blessed is he, whosoever shall not be offended in me. Then he goes, Jesus goes on and he talks about what kind of man John was. Right? He was more than a prophet. Among them that are born of women, there has not risen greater than John the Baptist. So Jesus confirms to John. Right? And the reason and the way he confirms it is by going back to the Old Testament, what John knew. Right? John knew in Isaiah, right, that's what we talked about was that he's going to make the, the blind to see, right, the lame to walk. That's how we're going to know that he's the Messiah, right? That's what John understood. That's what Jesus went back and, and comforted him and assured him of that. So Jesus, is, he, he confirmed it. To John, right? There's plenty of other people in the Bible that doubted. A lot of times doubt is caused by tragedies, maybe. Right? Death. Sickness. Yeah. Maybe just not knowing the outcome. Not knowing the future. Right? Some of the circumstances, like you wasn't there and you didn't see it for yourself. If I didn't see it for myself, I'm probably going to doubt it. Especially if it's something, you know, kind of off the wall, like Craig getting a hole in one or something. <laughs> it's not going to happen because he never gets close to the green. Amen. 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 <laughs> right. Sometimes it could be sin or disobedience, right? And other times, you know what? Sometimes our blessings that we get might 
give it away. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because sometimes our blessings are actually handed down, maybe from our fathers or from the people before us, and we don't deserve them. Right? So these things, a lot of them, when you look, there's always something in the way, basically. Come here, Eric, Pee Wee. Huh. I got to just to illustrate you. Get up there for me. I'm God. I'm not really God. You know what I mean? Right? She saved. We're close. I'm talking and walking with God. Right? Come here. Come to me. She doesn't have any fear. Because sometimes fear is a, a good thing and a bad thing. Especially in a kid. If he doesn't have any fear. Yeah, yeah. Doesn't have any doubts. <laughs> Off the roof he goes. Or whatever. <laughs> right? That's ridiculous. But at some point sets in, and then there starts to be doubt, right? Or something might get in the way. Get up one more step. Maybe we get a little further away. Huh? Look. <laughs> that was a good jump. Come here, bad boy. Sometimes some things might be in the way. Sometimes it might be sin, disobedience. Maybe, like I said, some of them, like we have sin, disobedience. <laughs> but either way, there's something between us and God, right? We weren't as close as we are. Come on. Well, I ain't jumping. <laughs> so what do we got to do? We got to get sin out of the way. <laughs> get out of the way. Go sit down. Right? Or that tragedy, or whatever that got in the way at that time. That caused doubt. That caused fear. <laughs> Made us where we didn't want to decide. And we got further away from God. Mm -hmm. Right? When we get rid of it. <coughs> right? Silly illustration, maybe. But I like to give a visual sometimes because it helps me. It helps my brain because of how I think of things. So now we're going to look at Thomas. See, there's no title up there tonight. Because everybody's already put Thomas, the doubter, in that spot, right? We want to look at him. We want to see exactly who Thomas was. And I want you to put later on. Think about it, and you put what you think Thomas's name should be there. I know what Scripture says, and hopefully I'll show that to you. We don't know his age for one. His name means twin. Both in the Hebrew, which was Teoma, which was sounds like Thomas, right? Yep. And the Greek was Didymus. And that's how he's referred to a lot of times as, as to Didymus. He's only in Scripture four or five times. He's in with uh, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. He's mentioned just in the listing of the apostles. And it's usually in the second group of the apostles, right? Four. 8, 12. The middle group, right? He's in that group.
we could probably say that he was a fisherman because in John 21 he says, Peter's there and he was fishing with him. Right? So what I want to do is I want to work through Thomas, but I'm going to go backwards from all of this. So we're going to stay in John the rest of the time. Just keep it, keep the Bible in John. Well, we ain't got to jump. We're going to go back and forth right here. We're going to go to John 11. And this is where we're introduced. Okay? At this time, Lazarus was was sick, they said, right? They just came from, and they're going to, or they're going to uh, Judea, right, to, to Martha. Verse, verse 7, we'll pick up there. Then after that, saith he to his disciples, let us go into Judea again. His disciples say unto him, Master, the Jews of late sought to stone thee. And goest thou thither again? Are you crazy? They tried to stone us there. Now you want to go back. That's what he's saying. You know, Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of the world. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth, because there is no light in him. These things said he, and after that he saith unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth. But I go, that I may awake him out of sleep. Then said his disciples, Lord, if he sleeps, he shall do well. I mean, he's all right. You know? Howbeit Jesus spake of his death, but they thought that he had spoken of taking a rest in the sleep. Then said Jesus unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. In my mind, I'm saying, he's saying, come on, dummy, he's dead. That's what I'm trying to tell you. He's really dead, right? And then he says, I'm glad for your sakes that I was not there to the intent that ye may believe. Nevertheless, let us go unto him. So Jesus wants to go back where they just tried to stone him, right? Let's look at verse 16. Then said Thomas, which is called Didymus, unto his fellow disciples. Let us also go, that we may die with him. Now, some people might say he was a pessimist or something, that he was just a, a gloom and doom, you know, oh well, here we go. That sounded pretty courageous to me, though. Doesn't say that he didn't go after he told him that, right? He told the other disciples, let's go. Let's go. If we die, we die. That's from some movie, I know. Right? But that was the point. He was courageous when he said it. He made a choice. He made a decision. He didn't doubt about that. There was no doubt when it came to that. He said, let's go die. Let's go to John 14. We're going to see. This is another reference where Thomas is. Like I said, there's only four or five. John 14, 1 through 6 says, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you I go to prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Whither I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest. How can we know the way? How can we know the way? Sounds like Thomas didn't want to be without. 
Jesus. Right? Sounded like he didn't want to be away from Jesus. He'd been walking with him. Yeah. Right? Yeah. He was his friend. He knew who he was. Yeah. He didn't deny that. You know, I think of my kids when it comes to this. Because my wife can be gone for 10 minutes down the road to her mom and daddy, supposedly. <laughs> right? And every one of the kids go, where's my mother? When's she coming back? I said, oh, good gracious. So bad to be here with your daddy. I've just worked four doubles, six, ten. I ain't seen you in six days, you know. And they're like, I walk in and they're like, huh, that's you, daddy? And they still on the couch. <laughs> Don't even get up. She's gone for ten minutes. They're running to the door, all of them. Trying to open the door for her. Make sure it's unlocked. <laughs> Less than 30 minutes. All four of you, <laughs> even the 15-year-old, 15, 15 yeah, <laughs> yeah. I look at that and say, I'm kind of jealous in a way sometimes, because I would like to come home after I work and say, hey, hey, glad to see you, you know, love you, give you a hug, whatever. <laughs> I go straight in there and get a shot. And she usually says, don't touch him, he stinks. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Wait until he had a bath. Whatever. <laughs> but the point is, they don't want to be away from her. They don't want to be away from her. And this just kind of reminds me of Thomas here. Because we well, look and see what Jesus says afterwards. Jesus said unto him, this is one of the I am statements. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If you had known me, you should have known my Father also. And from henceforth, you know him and have seen him. That doesn't sound like a rebuke. That was kind of like a, all right, I'm fixing to show you something. I am. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the door, the resurrection and the life, the good shepherd, the way, the truth, and the life, and I am the true vine. Right? Those are I am statements. He's claiming that he is the Father. Right? That was deity. And what we're going to look and see right here, right underneath, Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father. And it suffices us. Hold on now. Wasn't good enough Jesus just said this. Philip, he said, show us. So he's, but he is the spokesman here. He's the one that made the statement, right? Listen to how Jesus answers him. Jesus saith unto him, have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? Have you not known me? You had doubts that I am the Father? Who I said I was? Because now you want me to show it to you and it will satisfy you? Now we gotta, we've got to get satisfied, right? That's what he's saying. Satisfy us, please, so we'll know. Right? Then he goes on and through the rest, and he goes on and he says, believe us now that I am in the Father. So he goes on to explain the rest of this is Jesus is the Father and the Father. They're both, they're in one, right? Now we're going to go to John 20. This is the resurrection when this is, okay? 
This whole chapter is about the resurrection. Verse 8 says, Then went in also that other disciple which came first to the sepulchre, and he saw and believed. For as yet they knew not the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. See, their Messiah, like Mark pointed out, they thought he was going to be a, there forever, set up an earthly kingdom. Right? At that time. All of a sudden, Christ is dead. They didn't know about the resurrection, even though Jesus told them. Right? Sometimes, what do you say, hindsight is 20, 20 Once you look back at things that happened, then you say, oh, no wonder that happened like that. Mm -hmm. Right? So that's kind of what they're going later on. They're saying, because if they're looking back and saying, okay, now we're talking about the resurrection. If they thought it was going to rise again, they would have been sitting right there the whole time. Right? They would have been there the whole time sitting by that tomb making sure nobody else got him or anything else. But they knew not the scriptures. We keep reading down. Verse 19. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for the fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. And, and when he had said this, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father has sent me, even so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Whosoever sins you remit, they are remitted unto them. And whoever sins you retain, they are retained. Right? So all of a sudden he knew what the disciples were thinking. But look at verse 24. But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. Jesus automatically showed the other disciples exactly what they were thinking. Right? Because he knows their heart. He knows our heart. He knows everybody out here sitting right now exactly what you're thinking and what your heart is like. Right? And he comforted them because they, they thought it was a spirit coming through these closed doors. They were in fear. Right? And Jesus, knowing how to comfort, he says, he shows them his hands. But for some reason, we don't know the reason why. We can't speculate. We can't say, well, you know, I could say, you know, Thomas, maybe he was a loner. And he just grieved. Somebody he loved that much had died. He missed being there. Right? He didn't get to take part in what Jesus showed them, the other 11 or the other 10. Right? And he says, The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hand print of the nails and put my finger into the print of the nails and thrust my hand into his side I will not believe how hard would it be to actually see a miracle be part of a miracle try to explain it to somebody else 
and then really believe you. Right? Thomas, he, he might have been jealous. I missed out. We don't know what he was thinking. The scripture doesn't tell us that part. So we can't go and just say, oh, he was out breathing, or he was doing good. What? We can't say that. We just know he wasn't there at that time. Right? Jesus showed the disciples, though, to comfort them and to assure them. Right? And after eight days again, his disciples were within and Thomas with him. You like know, to try to say, Thomas wasn't going to miss out that time, was he? <laughs> <laughs> okay, y'all say it was him. I'm fixing to be there. I'm gonna make sure, right? For whatever reason, he was with them from then afterwards, right? Then came Jesus, the door being shut, and stood in the midst and said, "Peace be unto you." Then saith he to Thomas, <clears throat> he didn't say, "Thomas, Thomas, Thomas." Right? The disciples didn't have to tell Jesus that Thomas wasn't there and that you needed to show your hands to Thomas so he'll believe too. Right? Jesus knew. He said to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger and behold my hands and reach hither thy hand and thrust it into my side and be not faithless but be believing. <coughs> Listen to Thomas, though, his response. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. He claimed his deity right there. He knew exactly who he was, and he proclaimed it. Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. There was a privilege for Thomas right there. Because he got to see him. He goes on to tell us, blessed are they that have not seen him. And yet have believed. And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through his name. Amen. Amen. They didn't have the scripture. We have the scripture. Right? We didn't get to be there with them. But here's the account of everything. This is the truth. The word of God is the truth. It's what Thomas might have been looking for. Right? First Peter 8 and 9, 1 verse 8 and 9 says, Whom having not seen, ye love, and whom, though now you see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your soul. Man. I'll tell you. This is where my story where I have to tell it. This is my story. I doubt it. I was raised in church. This is my testimony, and I don't mind sharing it with anybody. Just like you should never mind sharing your testimony with anybody. The glory, the joy 
of your testimony, right? He saves you. I was eight years old. My granddaddy was a pastor. My dad was a music minister for over 40 years. Eight years old, I come down. I don't want to go to hell. Get baptized. <coughs> Still kind of like just a, I guess you'd say a rambunctious kid, maybe. <laughs> you say that? I don't know. Dentist menace, whatever, I don't know. <laughs> Wasn't too bad, I mean, not for eight. You know, fast forward till I'm 11 years old. By this time, you know, I'm already got tobacco at 11, you know. Doing some a little bit more rambunctious stuff, I would say, for an 11-year-old, you know. Not like I stole a car at 11, but I did steal stuff. I did things like that just to see if I didn't get caught. And I just, the thrill of it, I guess you could say, for 11. Stupid. Really dumb. And I'm at youth camp. And at that time, All these other kids around me are going down. They're giving their life to Christ. I said, y'all ain't leaving me out. I done did that back then, but you know what? You're talking about stealing and you're talking about all this other stuff. I don't want to do that. I, I did that. And I, want, I don't want to do it no more. That's all I knew. I didn't want to do that anymore. Maybe just that one thing. Right? So I come back and tell my dad, I saved you. Great. My life still never changed. Fast forward. Fast forward through whatever's worse stuff to get into. I'll put it that way. No sense in telling all that. Just wasn't as good as what it should have been. Nothing really bad. I, mean, I didn't kill anybody or anything, but I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> but I sat up under some preaching, and I hit a bad spot in my life. I was, I, let me back up. I would say I, I hit a bad spot in my life, and I had to move into with my parents, with my dad. And them. My dad, being the man of God that he is, Gone in heaven now, thank you. He says, You're not living in my house without going to church. He said, You can find another place to live. Well, I've already burnt those bridges <laughs> with some of the other places I should live. Right? I'm close to, like I said, I'm late 20s, I would say. Maybe like, you know, anyhow. I sat up under some hard preaching. And they were pretty blunt. They told me exactly what sin is, what I was doing wrong, and I need to repent. They didn't say I need to say that I was sorry. You know, maybe like when I was 11 or whatever. You know. <clears throat> say you're sorry. Ask Jesus in your heart. Right? I didn't have the repentance part. I didn't turn from what I was doing. Until I, one night I was there. After Sunday night, I came into my dad's room. Probably 2 o'clock in the morning. Kneeled down by his bed and I said, something ain't right. I said, what do you mean? I said, well, the preacher's been preaching pretty hard. I mean, he uh, he liked to use phrases like, you're lost, 
like a duck in a desert. That kind of stuff. I said, duck in the desert, that's, what? Why is a duck doing in the desert? But the more he said it, the more I said, I'm like that duck, I'm lost. I shouldn't be nowhere out there in the desert. By myself, there's no water around, right? So that night I accepted Christ. And from then on, I can say my life has changed. Amen. Amen. Yeah, I still messed up here and there, but my life was different. See, I doubted my salvation. Sometimes it's okay to doubt it. We've, God gives us the assurance if we're saved, right? See, this is the difference. I never doubted that Jesus was who he was because I was in church the whole time. I had faith that he was who he was. I had faith that he was God. I had faith that he was the Messiah, that he was the Savior. But I didn't have faith in him. There's a difference. I never doubted that he wasn't who he was. I had faith that he was the Messiah, but I didn't have faith in him enough to where I could turn over my life to completely and make him the Lord of my life. <coughs> been brought with several things this week. Uh, as musicians, as they come, okay, if you want to stand, everybody stand. It's okay to start with doubt. That's not where you want to end up. You understand what I'm saying? With head bows and eyes closed tonight.